basically the designing of the inverter circuit incorporates uh, three stages i'll be using a block schematic diagram to uh, explain all the three stages Now the first one is your uh, driver stage, uh, second one is the power stage and uh, third one is a transformer. So to keep the output voltage at a fixed level that is 220 volt uh, irrespective of the change in load or change in battery voltage we need to have a feedback kind of thing. So we have to make a feedback loop from the output voltage to the input that is our driver circuit. The tasks that are performed by the driver stage is very critical. Basically you can say that uh, the driver stage is the heart of the entire inverter circuit. So the first task is the generation of the modified sine wave uh, using a pulse width modulation technique. Second task is the performing all the housekeeping tasks such as short circuit protection, overload protection, low battery indication. I have already discussed all these housekeeping tasks in my previous videos. Third is the feedback loop compensation. It is quite a complex task because it involves some kind of control theory like gain margin, phase margin, body plot and all those things. So I will talk about this in my later videos. As you all know that the Arduino works on 5 volt so the modified sine waveform that is generated by the Arduino is also 5 volt. So we need to amplify this 5 volt signal uh, to a 12 volt level. So to do this task I am using a L293 D IC. I am using a Arduino Nano here instead of Arduino Uno. Uh, but you can use any of the boards, uh, it doesn't matter. Basically the L293 D is a dual channel H bridge uh, IC. It is uh, easily available in the market. Uh, pricing is approx $1. It is kind of very simple connection. Uh, I am using pin number 9 and pin number 10 for the uh, PWM generation and uh, uh, to enable this IC you need 5 volt which you can take from Arduino and uh, to amplify you need a 12 volt uh, so you can connect it from battery pack. If you refer to the data sheet of the L293D, you will come to know that uh, it is capable of uh, delivering only 1 amps. And uh, in the previous video, I have calculated the input current uh, going from battery to the inverter at full load uh, was to be 73.25 amps. So this current amplification stage uh, is uh, performed by your uh, power stage, which I will discuss later. So right now I am going to write a code for this. So I am including the timer1.h header uh, to for the generation of uh, PWM. Uh, second I am defining the constant uh, with, that is low battery voltage which is equal to 10.2 volts. Third is uh, I am defining a constant uh, high battery voltage uh, which is equal to 14.4 volt and uh, duty cycle is initialized with uh, 0 sense value is initialized with 0 again and uh, third one is your uh, battery voltage which is of uh, float data type uh, I have initialized this as 0, 0.0 so we have to uh, set the pin number 9 and pin number 10 as an output uh, pin to generate the PWM uh, we have to initialize the timer with a time period of 20 millisecond that is 50 hertz 
also the uh, we have to attach an interrupt to the timer one overflow uh, that is uh, battery voltage measurement now we have to set the pin number 10 uh, as an inverted of uh, pin number 9 to generate uh, pwm waveform here i am writing in uh, assembly language at that point so now the main battery voltage measurement function is started it will be executed every 20 millisecond as arduino has the 10 bit adc so the battery voltage that is captured by the arduino will range from 0 to 1023 so in order to convert that 0 to 1023 to 0 to 14.4 volt i am using a battery voltage variable which is of float data type that is equal to sense value into 14.4 by 1023 now i am i'll compare uh, the limits of the battery voltage that is if the battery voltage is less than 14.4 volt and the battery voltage is greater than 10.2 volt then set the duty cycle equal to uh, 300 and if the battery voltage is uh, less than 10.2 volt or it is greater than 14.4 uh, volt it means there is a fault in the battery voltage so we have to turn off the inverter and uh, set the duty cycle to the zero so the only task that is performed by the void loop function is the generation of the pwm so i am using a timer one dot pwm function which will generate the pwm in the at the pin 9 and the pin number 10 as you can see the code here now i'll compile the code you can see the waveform uh, generated by the driver stage it's of around uh, 13 volts uh, now you can also see the frequency it's around 50 hertz 49.02 hertz as you already saw the waveform generated by the arduino now it's time to design the power stage in which the current is amplified from say 1 amps to 73.25 amps uh, using push-pull topology. Now I'm designing the circuit of the power stage uh, using uh, N MOSFET configured in the push-pull topology. The voltage across the drain and source in the push-pull topology is double the battery voltage that is for 24 volt. So now the current is 73.25 amps and VDS is 
across 24 volt so here the n mosfet is chosen uh, that is irf uh, 3205 uh, it is capable of handling 110 amps over vds of uh, 48 volts the use of r1 and r3 resistance is to control the charging of the internal gate capacitance of the mosfet and uh, the use of uh, R2 and R4 resistance uh, is to discharge the gate capacitance when the MOSFET is turned off. So the dimensioning of the R1, R2 and R3 and R4 uh, I'll explain in the description below. Now here is the prototype of the inverter that I have uh, designed using the calculations uh, and the theory that I've already discussed in this video. As on the breadboard you can see it is a driver stage which is generating a 12 volt uh, modified sine wave. Uh, now this black circuit that you can see on the breadboard is a 12 volt to 5 volt converter. You can use a 7805 uh, or any other uh, bug IC. Now this is the Arduino Nano that I've used. Uh, you, of course you can use uh, Arduino Uno and uh, Arduino Mega, it doesn't matter. And uh, third is the L293 D IC. Now you can see the waveform that is generated by the driver stage. Uh, it's a modified sine wave capable of delivering 1 amps. So here is my battery. Uh, it's a 12 volt 7.2 AH capacity. Uh, now this one is the power stage. I'm using IRF 3205 and a heat sink. Uh, as the heat sink is small, that's why I'm using a fan here. Now you can see the waveform that is generated by the power stage. It's capable of delivering approx 75 amps. Now I'll feed this waveform into this uh, transformer. Uh, the output of the transformer is again the modified sine wave of RMS value 220 volts. And here is my load that I've connected. Uh, now I'll switch on the inverter. As you can see here, the output voltage is approx 230 volts. You can see in the multimeter. Uh, that's all for this time. In the next video, I'll try to cover the designing of the feedback loop and of course uh, PCB designing uh, using an Eagle software. Uh, for any doubt, uh, you can comment below and uh, guys don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos related to the electronics. Uh.